Is life taking away your joy? Hmm. Are you beginning to look like me? Hmm. Hello everyone and welcome to another weekly Devo. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, for those of you who might be joining me for the first time, my name is Andrew. I'm a pastor at Well and Be in Christ Church. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, a couple days ago on Sunday, I spoke about joy. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to see that message online, I encourage you to, to check that out. It, was, it had some pretty funny moments in it that you might find somewhat entertaining, but I think also it brought a, about a couple of really good points uh, in looking at joy. <clears throat> so I wanted to follow this up actually for my weekly Devo time because I had mentioned a very specific verse in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 2, and I'm going to read those verses for you. So Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 2, it says this. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance at the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And here's the key. For who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Joy is a, a very complex thing. And finding joy and keeping joy in the midst of our trials and our, our tribulations and our sorrows and all the things that are going on in this life, uh, not only uh, perhaps with disease or the loss of loved ones, whatever it might be, uh, this whole COVID situation, trying to keep joy in that. So there's lots of things uh, that affect our joy, but it's really important, and I focused in on this on Sunday's message, that we find ways to keep our joy, that we recognize that joy is available to us even in the midst of these difficult circumstances. So when we think of this verse that talks about Jesus considered it joy uh, to go to the cross for us, that's, that's a really puzzling thought that in our humanness it doesn't even really make sense but let's unpack it a little bit and there's a couple things that i i wanted to, to just take note of i think the first thing that we want to note is that we ourselves human beings bring jesus joy bring jesus joy think about it in this sense think about us as parents or you specifically maybe you're watching as a grandparent or maybe an aunt uncle whatever it might be Think about the way that you talk about your kids to other people, um, uh, hopefully in a positive way, but most times we brag about our kids. We love to show them off. We love to open up our wallets and say, hey, check out little Billy or little Sally, whatever it is. Um, we love to brag on our kids. I know grandparents specifically love to brag on their grandkids. And, uh, and that's how Jesus looks at us and I know I've used this illustration before if Jesus was to kind of um, fold out his wallet so to speak and I know it sounds a little strange to say that but his wallet would just kind of go boom 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 and you would see hundreds of thousands millions even billions of pictures of his children and that's how much he's in love with us it brings him pure joy to just know that we are his children alone he created us in his image and we bring him joy now one of the other things uh, that I wanted to just touch on this from a bit of a theological perspective more specifically this verse in Hebrews and I'm gonna reread it it's uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 and it says this let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith for who the joy set before him endured the cross for the joy set before him endured the cross. Now, um, there's a few theologians out there, not very many, but some pretty, uh, some pretty significant ones, specifically John Calvin, says that this word joy in this context, in this verse in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, is actually the word anti. 
is the Greek word anti. So it's not our typical Greek word for joy, but rather it's the word anti in Greek. And that means for or in place of. For or in place of. So when we think of this word joy, that Jesus had joy uh, as he thought about going to the cross, it was because he was going in place of us. And that literally brings him joy. So when we think of it in that context, if we use that context of the word joy and we think of it for someone else or in place of someone else, it gives us this idea of, I don't know what you're like, but when I give someone a gift or when I do some form of serving or I do something for someone else, it actually brings me joy. And so I think that that's also part of it. God gave us the greatest gift he could have ever given us in his son, Jesus. And Jesus gave us the greatest gift he could have ever given us by going to the cross for us. And that brings him joy. It brought him joy to serve us in that way. And so when we serve others, when we do things for others, it just naturally is going to bring us joy because that's how we're designed. That's how we're created. We're created with this wonderful gift, this wonderful opportunity to serve one another. So helping us brings Jesus joy. Helping us brings Jesus joy and helping others should bring us joy. Now I want to flip over just a few pages in the Bible. We were at Hebrews 12, just a couple pages over is the book of James. James was the brother of Jesus and uh, we've talked a little bit about that, about what it might be like being a sibling of Jesus. Um, and we joked a little bit about, you know, the parent thing, uh, the parents maybe seeing, hey, James, why can't you be a little more like Jesus when he's maybe misbehaving or something like that? But James chapter one, verse two says this, and this is for us. This isn't connected to Jesus. This is connected to Christ followers now. And it says this, James chapter one, verse two, consider it pure joy. Consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Now this is what the difference is in Christ followers. If we're truly Christ followers, we can still find joy in places of despair in places in our trials and tribulations as things that just really irk us or frustrate us or get us down or whatever, there's still the opportunity for joy to be found in that. And if we look at it in terms of this opportunity of in place of, we find joy in place of the things that are frustrating us or making us sad or making us lonely these types of things. So this is why it's so important to be in constant relationship with God. This is why it's important to be in prayer. This is why it's important to be in scripture and reading and communing with him and being in touch with him, going for a nature walk, something like that, reconnecting uh, with creation in the sense that understanding that it is God the Father, uh, well, actually the triune God who created the earth. And so, so many of those things are important is just staying focused. Remember the verse before in Hebrews chapter 12 said, we keep our eyes focused on Jesus. We keep our eyes focused on Jesus. And that's what brings us joy. So Jesus had joy that went with him before he endured the cross because one, we're his children. And he loves us and he loves to brag on us and he loves to serve us. And if we want to find joy, one of the ways that we can find joy is to serve others as well and love on those who are around us. I hope that helps a little bit today with unpacking some joy and bringing some joy. Again, if you are lacking joy at this time, ask for it. Just ask the Holy Spirit, ask Jesus, ask God to give you another portion of joy so that you can make a difference, not only in your own life and in your own health, but in the life and health of those who are around you. So I hope that helps a bit today. If anyone needs anything, thanks so much for joining me today. Don't hesitate to call me or email me, reach out to me, uh, message me on Facebook, whatever it might be. I love you all so much. Stay safe and uh, God bless.